quickly joining in the next few minutes just while I make some opening remarks. So I think I'm going to open the meeting and uh, welcome everybody to our meeting tonight. Uh, this meeting is being held virtually via Zoom as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the, the meeting is being recorded and is live streamed to the community. Now, I'd just like to remind elected members that there are, the usual meeting procedures do apply, but there are a few modifications uh, to accommodate the online platform. So if anyone wishes to speak to a motion, please use the raise hand feature, which we've been using um, during our briefing. Seems to be working well. Um, if multiple elected members raise their hand simultaneously, it will show um, show up for us um, here chairing as to where that, which hand went up first. Uh, when you're not speaking, if you could keep your microphone muted. Uh, to move or second a motion, elected members can use the raise hand feature and I'll recognise you and call out the mover and the seconder of the motion uh, for the purposes of the minutes and for those viewing online. Uh, and at the conclusion of the debate of each motion, I'll put the motion and I'm going to ask each elected member in turn, uh, in order of precedence, how you vote on that motion. If you can just say um, in favour or against, just to keep it nice and clear. Uh, and for procedural motions, uh, I'm going to just some of, we've got some very basic motions about moving into closed and uh, extending time. I'm going to, rather than running through that roll call, I'm going to just ask if anyone is against the motion and uh, if you can just speak if you are against. Uh, otherwise, if I hear no voices, we'll consider that considered unanimously. That's just for procedural sort of um, minor uh, motions. So when, uh, while um, it might be a bit slower, um, I'm sure, I think we're all getting a bit better and a bit more used to this now. So that's that's really positive. Um, and obviously if there's a procedural motion, you can just um, unmute and speak if you want to. Um, Alderman Thomas, you've got a tick against your name. I'm not quite sure what that one is, but um, that's a yes. Well, by the looks of this. Great, okay. So um, to start with, as with all of our meetings, we always acknowledge the traditional owners of the land upon which the city of Hobart was built. So I'd like to acknowledge the determination and resilience of the Palawa people of Tasmania uh, who have survived invasion and dispossession and continue to maintain their identity, culture and rights. The uh, minutes of our last meeting have been circulated. That was on the 27th of April. Oh no, sorry, it was on the 18th of, the minutes are of the 18th of May meeting. Oh, it's two, two minutes, sorry. Yes. Uh, would someone like to move those? I've got a hand up from yes, Alderman seconded. Thomas and seconded by, I need hands up if you can, please. Oh, oh Councillor yeah. Sherlock, thank you. Um, so all those in favour of those minutes, um, oh, sorry, if, if, no, if, if someone is not in favour of the minutes, please speak. No, well, that's unanimous, thank you. Uh, so the minutes are passed un unanimously. Uh, item two is the transfer of agenda items. Are there any items that uh, any elected members would like to have transferred around to a different part of the agenda? I can't see any raised hands, so I'm going to uh, move on. Um, I don't have any communications from the chairman tonight, uh, and there's been no council workshops. Item five is public question time. General Manager, are there any public questions tonight? Uh, no, Lord Mayor, there are not. And item six is petitions. General Manager, have we received any petitions? Uh, no, Lord Mayor, we have not. Okie doke. Uh, supplementary items. There is one supplementary item and that is item, General Manager, what item was that one? Sorry. 11. 11. Okay, no. item 11 is supplementary. So just moving on to indications of pecuniary or conflicts of interest. So, uh, so moved, Lord Mayor. Do any elected members wish to indicate an entry in any item appearing on the open council agenda? 
Lord raise Mayor. your hand. Um, just, Lord Mayor, Mayor. Sup, Harden, needs a mover and second. Okay, so okay I'm sorry. Move that. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Ewan. Um, is anyone opposed to that motion on the supplementary item? No one is speaking, so therefore uh, we'll take that as unanimous. Thanks for that, Deputy Lord Mayor. Sorry for missing that. Uh, so item eight is indications of pecuniary conflicts of interest. Does anyone wish to declare any interest in any matters tonight? Can't see any hands up, so that's, we will move on. Okay, so we now uh, are moving into acting as a planning authority. And uh, we've all just come from uh, deputations on these items, so we're very well briefed. Uh, but I will invite Deputy Lord Mayor and the Chair of the Planning Committee to open item 9.1 and uh, move that motion for 10 Evans Street. Thank you. Deputy Thank Lord you, Mayor. Lord Mayor. Thank you. So this is a move that the planning approval um, for new road and associated works at 10 Evans Street. Uh, I've, got it, I've got it seconded by Councillor Sherlock. Lord Mayor, this um, was specifically, it's a proposal which includes uh, a new road extending from the existing entry point onto the Macquarie Point site of the Tasman Highway below the escarpment line on the Macquarie Point site and terminating towards the eastern side uh, of the site near the existing Taswater Wastewater Treatment Plant. Uh, the work in, uh, works also include upgrades to the existing slip lane uh, coming off the Tasman Highway to facilitate the new access into the site, uh, associated stormwater and infrastructure works, but also um, the uh, crossing and pedestrian and, and bicycle movement uh, across the proposed road. Uh, the, the proposal relies on a number of performance criteria. There were, um, there was one representation received during the statutory advertising period, but um, if you, like me, Lord Mayor, um, received quite a number of emails, um, there's certainly some interest, uh, mainly around uh, retaining the rail corridor. Now we had a special briefing, uh, which, which, uh, and we had a deputation from the, the Mayor of, of Glenorchy, raising those concerns, um, but equally we had guarantee from Macquarie, Macquarie Point that um, this application uh, doesn't hinder uh, the rail corridor and that's, that's seen um, in a number of those um, uh, conditions as you can see. Uh, there were two other um, uh, clauses to the conditions uh, which I'll ask the um, uh, Director of Planning to um, just uh, refer us to, uh, but essentially this is um, uh, recommended for approval, approval subject to conditions. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, sorry, were you suggesting that you were seeking some further uh, advice to be provided by Mr Noy? Was that what you were suggesting? Or? Yeah, I think, uh, Lord Mayor, there was um, a suggestion uh, at the deputation that uh, there might be a couple of conditions of advice. Mr Noy, did you want to speak to that or that's, is that coming yeah. from one of the elected members maybe? Yeah, no, look, there was a memo that was circulated under se separate cover. Um, that uh, identified two conditions that were miss, missed off the original agenda related to contaminated site issues. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's just including those within the, um, in the motion uh, to ensure that we cover off on those issues. Okay, okay. Lord, uh, sorry about that. I, I'm happy to move it as uh, including those conditions. Uh, is the seconder happy with that, Councillor Sherlock? Yes. Yes, Councillor Sherlock's happy with that. Uh, I have Bill, uh, sorry, I have Councillor Harvey's hand up. Yeah, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, at the briefing, we raised the issue of having a statement 
or a, a condition included into the into the development application that would acknowledge um, the importance of the rail corridor and that it wouldn't be jeopardized. So I'd like to move an amendment that we include that, um, that we include an amendment. Have that you got that? Have you have yep. you got that written or would you like to read that out? Yep. Well, an appropriate statement um, be included as advice um, that would advice to preserve the rail corridor to provide for a future transport service. I haven't written it down that could be um, shared, but so I'll, I'll have another go. That an appropriate statement acknowledging the importance of the railway corridor um, be included and that that acknowledged uh, future transport uh, requirements. Something along those lines. So the, I'm happy for the, the director to nuance the words. I'm happy to second that, Lord. Uh, I'm, I'm, I might just see whether the mover and the second are happy to just incorporate that in. Uh, look, I think um, I'd like to do it as a- As an amendment. All right, no worries. That's fine. Um, so I just, okay. I just confirm with the director that he's he's um able to nuance those words that are uh, an appropriate statement be included. Yeah, look, I think um, just um, uh, I suppose acknowledging the commitment um, that uh, Mary Messner uh, has made in relation to the rail corridor and and is reflected in legislation and title uh, title requirements. So simply acknowledging that as an advice clause uh, would be appropriate. Okay, you happy with that? Um, Alderman Barakas? Uh, seconded by Alderman Barakas, yeah. I, I certainly am, Councillor Harvey. Okay, um, I had a hand up, I think next from Alderman Barakas, but was that for your seconding, Alderman oh, that was That was the second, I'll reserve okay. my right to speak to No worries. Um, I think I had one from Councillor Dutter. No, I was, I was just, no, no, I was going to second, so it's been seconded. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Alderman Briscoe, are you seconding as well or are you speaking? Uh, you just need to unmute yourself, um, Alderman Briscoe. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I was going to second it, but someone's got in first, but I, I would like to make a few comments about... Yes. Yeah, the, the, uh, and I think the uh, director has picked this up. I think in the extra advice that we're putting on the permit, if it gets through tonight, uh, it should, uh, should have the words reflected in the title and other documents. Um, so it's clear that it's not a new thing. It is uh, what the um, management plan and the title uh, um, um, actually um, requires more than actually. So it's not a new, a new uh, condition we're putting on it. It's actually what, um, all the uh, legislation require. So uh, I know we haven't got the words in front of us, but uh, as Mr. Noy will be um, putting this down on paper, I'm sure uh, he has to, I'm sure he will mention the word titles and other documents that uh, require us to make sure that rail corridor. Now, um, it is strange that uh, the mayor of the, a preview of the neighboring council got involved here. It's very unusual. Um, and she got involved, it appears, uh, as a representative of the Glenorchy City Council. That is very interesting to me, very unusual, unprecedented, especially when uh, the report indicated very clearly that the uh, transit corridor allowed for light rail. And, uh, and I've been a supporter of uh, light rail into Hobart for years, just like uh, some of my fellow councillors and aldermen. In fact, I gave... Um, the council the first motion when I introduced uh, uh, Mr. Johnson, um, the mayor's husband to the council with his uh, thesis about electric rail link between Ganorki and Hobart. So I have a long standing um, uh, interest in this area, but I'm sure this uh, uh, access road does not impede um, the long term goal of having light rail into Hobart. So uh, that's I'm just showing my support for the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, look, I'm going to just ask people to speak to the amendment that's in front of us at the moment, which is the additional advice moved by Councillor Harvey, seconded by Alderman Barakas. Is there any any comments on the um, 
any further um, represent um, interventions on the amendment. Otherwise, I'll put that before we talk about the substantive motion. No? Okay. Um, well, I'll just um, put the amendment, which is the, the one we've just been talking about with the advice that's still to be fully framed up by the director, but I think everyone's clear that it's a statement uh, indicating um, in the in the approval the some of the um, important planning uh, documents uh, and um, titles that uh, uh, and the requirement to preserve the the corridor for a, um, a transit system and just the the, the, the city uh, of Hobart. Point of, order, point of order. Yes. Uh, you're changing the process that we we can debate, Oops, debate the full motion and the amendments. And then at the end of the debate of the full motion and the amendments, then you put the amendment and then there's a summing up. So you're changing the process. Can I have clarification of that? Uh, yes, Alderman Briscoe, yeah. I, I've, I've sought some advice and um, this is the um, suggestion that we we discuss the amendment that's in front of us and then we'll go back to the substantive motion. I wonder if you could so that's, advice, please. Sure, I'll, I'll do that after the meeting, but that that's the advice. That's, that's, that's how advice. we're gonna run the meeting tonight. So, uh, so I'm not going to take the point of order. Thank you. No, I've got a point of order, Lord Mayor. I'm sorry. There's a question being asked by by the um, Alderman Briscoe, and he's entitled to ask. Order? Well, he's entitled to ask a question yes. to the general manager to clarify procedure. Uh, well, the general manager is not the chair of the meeting. I am, and that's um, that's not the. It's it's not. Um, this isn't cutting off debate. This is just good procedure that you, you discuss and vote on the amendment before you, before you move on to either the next amendment or back to the substantive motion. Well, so the point of order, Lord Mayor, is that there is a motion in front of us. Yes. We are, di we are discussing the, the a motion. In front of us, yes. And there is an amendment in front of us. Yes. So, so the, the process of, of procedural has always been that we discuss the motion and the amendment. Those who have spoken to, to That's not the motion. That's not a point of order, I'm afraid. Alderman. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I'm sorry. You are you are changing the rules to suit no. yourself, and I am not going to be. I'm not going to partake in a meeting for you to come to a meeting and decide that you're going to change the rules. And we can have clarification if this is proper procedure. We need to. We need to be able to come to a meeting and have proper procedure that we're all and all understand. Hey, not for you to change it any any time you wish to do so. Sorry, the mayor made the call, so just deal with it. Yeah. Okay. I, I have um, um, my understanding is that um, my my ruling is not to be questioned, and I am going to run the meeting as per um the pr meeting procedures, which is that we will deal with the amendment uh, and vote on that, and then go back to the substantive item. There is nothing um that needs to be um there's there's nothing to there's no problem here this is just a, a, a the the um the procedure uh, everyone will still get to speak of course um so there's not there's no problem so let's proceed uh with um i think who was i think alderman briscoe had spoken on the mm -hmm. amendment does anyone else want to speak on the amendment i think i've got councillor sherlock councillor sherlock thank, thank, yeah thank you very much Lord Mayor, um, I, I did. I was just basically going to reiterate the points that were already made, and I think oh. Mary pointed them out with regards to the rail corridor that it was protected in three ways, which I think the amendment should incorporate. Which is number one, the easement, um, as is contained in Lot Four, the, um, by protected by the title and protected by the planning scheme, site covenants, and the Act. So I'm understanding that the director will probably include that in his um, in the amendment that he shall write. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Are there any further um, requests to speak to the amendment? Otherwise, I can't see any hands up, so I'm going to put the amendment um, that was put by Councillor Harvey, seconded by uh, Councillor, uh, sorry, Alderman Barakas, and I'll just go around and um, ask for whether you're for or against the amendment, starting with uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. In favour, Lord Mayor. Alderman Zuko. Oh. Alderman Briscoe. Uh, in favour. Alderman Sexton. Or. Oh. Alderman Harvey. 
Uh, sorry, Alderman Thomas, sorry. Or. Councillor Harvey. Or. Alderman Barakas. Uh, in favour, Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillor Dutta. For. Councillor Ewan. For. Councillor Sherlock. In favour. Councillor Coates. In favour. And I'm in favour too, so that's unanimous. Thanks, everyone. So we'll go back to the substantive motion. Uh, would anyone like to speak on the, um, the motion as amended? Alderman Barakas. Well, uh, thank, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, we, Lord Mayor, we heard from the, um, uh, the representative, the Mayor of Glenorchy, and we heard from the, um, the applicant, Ms Massena. Um, I, I, I myself was, had, um, was not convinced of any reason why the, um, the application does not conform with the planning scheme, and I'm not convinced that it does anything to um, restrict or inhibit any potential um, light rail in the area. So, look, I, I, would, I would be voting for the recommendation. I'm glad that Councillor Harvey um, moved, moved the advice because hopefully that does uh, um, alleviate some of the concerns that the com community has because there, there were obviously quite a, quite a large number of people that raised their concerns by emails, which I'm sure everybody else um, also received. Um, I, I am a bit concerned about how we've, we've gotten to this situation though. So I, I do have a couple of questions for um, the, uh, Mr. Noy. Um, Mr. Noy, was, was this item originally intended to go, be delegated to officers for recommend for approval? Uh, I think the question has to go to the general manager. General oh. manager, are you happy to send that to Mr. Noy? I am Lord Mayor. Mr. Noy, would you like to? Uh, yes, uh, that, that's um, fair to say that it was uh, originally um, uh, delegated uh, to the officers but uh, it was called in, uh, as is the ability of uh, elected members to do so. Uh, thank you. And just, just, just a couple of follow-up questions. Um, the, since we've um, suspended our committee's system and we haven't had planning committee meetings, have any of the other planning items that we've discussed up until now, um, have the applicants or any of the representatives been given an opportunity to speak to council directly? In a formal in a formal setting such as today uh no not that i'm aware of under the sort of the, the new uh um zoom approach mm -hmm. and 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 just as a last one who, who actually pulled this item forward for um for it to come to council if that's a not an inappropriate question to ask um look i'd, I'd need to uh I, I understood it was the Lord Mayor, but um, Lord Mayor might correct me on that. No, that's correct. Thank you. Right. Um, I've got further discussion. I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm still got Alderman. it. Uh, thank you. Alderman Brackers, uh, yeah. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, I, look, I, I'm completely comfortable with this um, application to be approved and I, I will be voting for the, for the recommendation, but I, I, I am quite concerned about how we've gotten here because it does seem like this, this, um, this was a pretty open and shut case. It had one representation, which was which has never been a um, an issue to um, for, for it to come before the council. And it does seem that this particular item um, has received some very very um, uh, what do you call it um, favourable treatment by the council because up until now we've never had um, special meetings set aside for um, for planning meetings during during this. Uh, um, COVID-19 period of shutdowns. It does seem very much like we've had, uh, you know, one, uh, one, one representative who was, who was the mates of one of the elected members who's, and some strings have been pulled to make sure that they get favourable treatment. So, look, I, I am quite concerned about this. I think that there are um, some uh, applicants, in past, applicants and concerned citizens who've made representations in past items who'd be, um, who were deprived of the ability to, you know, uh, make their points to the council, they would be asking questions about this. I, I'd leave that there as a comment, but I, I would be commending the recommendation. Thank you, Alderman Brackus. Um, Councillor Dutta, I can see your hands up. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I, I have uh, just a few points to make. Firstly, uh, the concerns raised by the mayor and a number of other uh, residents and citizens uh, with, the, with the emails that I have received and I think their concerns are valid. And I was very pleased to hear the concerns made by the mayor. However, 
I think the uh, response given by Mary was very, very clear and categorical that there is a guarantee as uh, Councillor Sherlock has stated in those three elements. So I'm quite happy with that, that we've met the concerns, but there are reassuring um, endorsements that they, it won't be taken away. The question for me is this, whether the, uh, uh, this will compromise the Northern Suburbs Railway Corridor. Now, again, the question was asked, and it appears that the answers given to me are very clear that it will not compromise it. And thirdly, when I look at the clause under which this was uh, taken into consideration, it is not contrary to clause 3235, and nor is it contrary to 324. So I'm quite happy to support this. Thank you. Okay, I can't see any further hands up, so I'm going to uh, put the uh, motion. Oh, uh, Councillor uh, Coates, yes. Uh, Councillor uh, Coates. Uh, yes, um, just want to speak briefly to this. Um, look, uh, normally with a smoke, there might be some fire. In this instance, um, I guess I'd, I'd, I'd speak to the motion I'm in, in favour of it. Um, it would appear that they provided three very firm reasons as to why the transport corridor, uh, for any possible thing for the northern suburbs, will be able to go ahead, not least if it's on a separate title, um, and the easement, which means that the land is available. Um, but also... Obviously, that uh, that um, on behalf of the Macquarie Point Land Development Corporation, um, they've more more than happily agreed to us adding in advice, and, and I again supported that motion. Well, no one voted against that motion, um, but uh, to me, it would seem that we've been used in this instance, if you like, for a media thing for them to somehow argue that this putting in road was against the transport, and we've all been carried along for a bit of a ride, to be honest, um, and and even uh, in providing if you like a platform for, for, for them to talk about it. But we heard from a proponent, but um, I think one of the telling comments when uh, they were able to brief us was she said, looks forward to people getting off a train and, and being at Macquarie Point. So I, I can't see any motive and I can't see any action where they've actually gone against it. So I would urge people to vote for this proposal in full knowledge that it would appear not to block any uh, Northern Suburbs rail. Okay, thank you. I've got um, Alderman Briscoe. Alderman Briscoe. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, just a question to the uh, director, uh, Mr. Noy, uh, firstly. Uh, Mr. Noy, the, uh, the representation, was that on behalf of the, uh, the city of Gnorki? Did it come through as the city of Gnorki um, representation or um, Ms. Christy uh, Johnson? Yeah, look, I understand it was the Mayor of Glenorchy on, on behalf of uh, the City of Glenorchy. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Now, there's some, a lot of, as uh, Alderman Coates and uh, Alderman Barakas uh, have mentioned, there is a, a lot of misinformation that has been on the airway from the front page of the, uh, of the Mercury this morning. So if any media you do, uh, Lord Mayor, I'd advise you to correct um, correct uh, the record because uh, the emails we received today uh, show uh, that the misinformation that has been spread around um, uh, is in the, uh, will stay in the community uh, that uh, the council was considering tonight uh, approving a road that uh, stopped a light rail into Hobart and that's clearly not the case uh, as uh, others have pointed out. So I'm hoping that the, any media you do, you point out the uh, errors that have crept into the public debate, um, because I think uh, it, it shows us into a bad light that we were, uh, our officers recommended approval of a road, and uh, certainly the report indicated that there was no um, law broken, uh, and the uh, corridor transit for the uh, for the light rail was still in existence. So I'm hoping that you do that, Lord Mayor, even though you were the one that called it in to some kind of strange, it wasn't a planning meeting this uh, this afternoon, to some kind of strange briefing, uh, because a uh, planning meeting would have been chaired by the deputy and uh, have the pro pro protocols so that would be a recommendation to council. But in this case, there was a briefing, a very unusual briefing. And so I'm hoping that this uh, unusual briefing uh, doesn't continue, that we have official uh, 
uh, planning meetings chaired by the, chair, uh, the deputy um, and proper procedure. Because what was this afternoon? It wasn't a planning meeting. It was some kind of a platform, I imagine, um, for people uh, such as the mayor to, to give misinformation to the community when we know that, that that misinformation was in fact misinformation. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, or I think it's Councillor Harvey. Yep. <clears throat> Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I'll be supporting the recommendation today for this DA to go, go forward. Um, but I'd also I'd like to acknowledge that this is a milestone for the Macquarie Point Development Corporation. So it's good to see that they're, they're moving on the project, that a road is now um, hopefully going to be um, ticked off tonight with the DA, and that will lead to the next stage. And I'm hopeful that I'll be alive to see the Macquarie Point development um, completed at some point in time. So I'd just like to acknowledge, not necessarily to talk about the, the, um, the railway line, which we understand is protected, but I'd like to acknowledge that another milestone has been reached with the Macquarie Point development. So good on them, good on them and I hope the road goes ahead smoothly. Thank you. Okay, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, would you like to sum up? Oh, yes, Deputy Lord Mayor, would you like to sum up? Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. And I, I um, think we've had a fair range um, of comments in relation to this application, some um, uh, steering quite a, uh, a long way away from the planning application before us. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, you've muted yourself accidentally, I think. I hope you didn't miss too much of that, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, Notwithstanding, I think that um, the application before us um, is, is uh, well, I am certainly confident that uh, the, the uh, rail corridor, uh, the public transit corridor uh, will be um, available. As said, um, this um, means that there will be um, the beginning of uh, development uh, and stage one, really, of um, of the uh, Macquarie Point area. Look, I don't uh, believe that there was any sort of uh, conspiracy uh, in relation to to um, uh, the mayor of Glenorchy putting this forward. Um, it's uh, and and her her concerns on behalf of her community. Um, it's very good to hear from a mayor and her community, um, and so they should be representing uh, the, their views. Uh, it is a really important rail corridor. We know that, uh, and um, it's quite clear that uh, this application won't be um, won't be jeopardising that. Um, and um, and in in regard to the briefing that we had and the chance to to have uh, representors heard. Um, it, it was not only that, that uh, application that we heard, there were others, um, uh, but I'm very pleased to hear the vote of confidence um, in my chairing ability uh, for, for planning meetings. So I look forward to uh, um, starting up planning uh, committee meetings uh, once more. So move the recommendation, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go around again uh, and just ask how you vote. So, Deputy Lord Mayor. In favour, Lord Mayor. Alderman Zuko. In favour, Lord Mayor. Uh, Alderman Briscoe. Uh, in favour of the motion. Alderman Sexton. For. Alderman Thomas. In favour. Councillor Harvey. For. Alderman Barakas. In favour. Councillor Dutta. In favour. Councillor Ewan. Or Councillor Sherlock. In favour. Councillor Coates. In favour. And I'm in favour too. General Manager, that's unanimous, I think. It's unanimous, Lord Mayor. Terrific. Let's move on to item 9.2, uh, which is, um, we also had a deputation about that. I'm um, just, uh, 9.2, sorry, is five to seven uh, Sandy Bay Road. Um, and I'll invite Deputy Lord Mayor to um, outline this item. Thank you, introduce this item. 
Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll move uh, the officer's recommendation for refusal um, for, for this item. Uh, seconded by Councillor Ewan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, Lord Mayor, this this uh, application is uh, from uh, along five to seven uh, Sandy Bay Road. It's it's uh, four titles um, on um, this this site. Uh, it's the proposal is for demolition and new building for fifty five multiple dwellings, food services, and associated works with the adjacent road reserve at five to seven Sandy Bay Road. Um, and the proposal it looks uh, to build um, on the or the demolition of the existing Conservatorium of Music building, which uh, was the original ABC purpose built ABC building years ago. Uh, and um, the steel tower would be also uh, demolished to construct two apartment buildings containing a total of 55 dwellings at a maximum height of one tower uh, at 22.35 metres, the second tower at 33.23 metres. Um, it would contain two levels of basement car parking for 86 car spaces and bicycle storage with an access uh, via a ramp from Wilmot Street. The proposal relies on performance criteria to satisfy uh, the following standards of, and codes. It's urban mixed use zone development standards, road and railway, parking and access, attenuation and historic heritage code. There were 352 representations in objection and one in support of the proposal. Um, and the application was referred to the urban design advisory panel uh, and the item presented to the panel um, uh, suggested or the, the panel's advice to council is that they were not supportive of the of the height of propose, proposal in particular. Uh, interestingly, the heritage views of the mosaic do not extend to the heritage values of other buildings on this site. So the heritage of the, of, of the George Davis uh, mosaic is protected. Um, however, the other heritage values um, of other buildings, significant buildings, do not count in this uh, consideration tonight because they're in a different heritage um, precinct. So they're in the Hampton Road precinct. So it's a bit of a, an anomaly there, if you like. Um, the, um, so it's really the, the height in this mixed um, use zone, which is the main problem. And uh, just in closing, the, um, there are two uh, reasons for refusal. So uh, building height part D 15.4.1 uh, P1B um, because the proposed larger Western apartment tower is not compatible with the scale of nearby buildings. And secondly, um, the other uh, reason is that the proposed larger Western apartment tower does not allow for, tr for a transition in height between adjoining buildings. The, um, the decision on nine, Will, uh, nine Sandy Bay Road uh, was quite a, a fundamental um, planning um, decision by tribunal and um, and height is is fundamental when we're considering uh, such such issues. So I uh, move the recommend re recommendation for refusal, Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor. Thank you. Yes, Alderman Thomas, you're next. Yes, were you Mayor, wanting? You. Yeah, were you wanting just to speak? I did see no, your hand. No, I, I tried my hand. Never mind. I'm here. No, um, I saw your hand. Yeah, here you are. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, based on the uh, discussion held prior to this meeting and the developer's willingness to uh, sit down with officers again, I'm moving a procedural motion for a deferral, please. Okay, I'll, I need a uh, second after that. Oh. I'll second that. Seconded by uh, Alderman oh, Briscoe. Mayor. I think the general manager would like to say something. The, uh, I'm just talking through you, Lord Mayor, to Mr. Noy. Um, I note, Mr. Noy, that the 42 days expires on the 26th of May. Um, so that is... Uh, tomorrow. So yeah. do you have a comment to make on that, Mr. Noy? Because it seems like a risk in deferring at the absence of consent from the applicant. 
Yeah, look, uh, good point, General Manager. In anticipation that this might uh, be an outcome, we've made contact with the applicant and they have agreed to an extension of time to accommodate discussions around that issue. Okay, so it's a, a procedural motion which is um, um, takes precedence and I'm going to put that uh, immediately and I'll go around and um, see if there's agreement with the deferral motion. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor? Against Lord Mayor. Uh, Alderman Zuko? For Lord Mayor. Alderman Briscoe? For the deferral. Is that for Alderman Briscoe? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Uh, you can now, yeah. Cool. That's fine. Uh, Alderman Sexton? For. Alderman Thomas? For. Councillor Harvey? Can't hear you, Councillor Harvey. Uh, against. Uh, Alderman Barakas. For Lord Mayor. Councillor Dutta. Against. Councillor Ewan. For. Uh, Councillor Sherlock. In favour. Councillor Coates. Uh, in favour. And um, I'll vote in favour as well. So thank you, Lord Mayor. That's carried nine votes to three. Okay. All right, we're moving on now to item 9.3, uh, which is uh, also in Sandy Bay Road, uh, number nine, Sandy Bay Road, and also one of the um, deputations we heard this afternoon. Uh, and I'll invite Deputy Lord Mayor to introduce that item. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I move uh, the motion for approval for demolition and new building for 28 multiple dwellings and associated works within the adjacent road reserve. It's been uh, seconded by Councillor Ewan. Uh, thanks, um, Lord Mayor. This uh, received uh, a number of, of uh, representations, so 209 representations, certainly a lot more um, than, than previously. Uh, the the uh, discretions are urban mixed zone, mixed use zone, development standards, parking and access code, stormwater management code, attenuation code, and historic heritage code. Um, the site, uh, as you're aware, is is on the corner of Wilmot and Sandy Bay Road. Um, it's a larger residential property, and it comprises two titles. Uh, currently, there are 18 apartments um, uh, across. Uh, the area and they're, uh, they're up to three storeys. The site is within the planning schemes, urban mixed use zone. Um, and there's a small area to the southern part of the property, which again straddles this um, um, Hobart to heritage precinct, another heritage precinct, although no development other than landscaping is proposed within this area. Um, the Specific proposal is for demolition, as I said, and construction of a new building that would contain 28 apartment style multiple dwellings, uh, 10 one bedroom, 10 two bedroom, eight three bedroom apartments, one of those being a, a penthouse on the sixth floor. Um, the new building would have a maximum of six storeys, one partially below ground and a maximum height above ground level 19.35 metres. So um, the elements, the two elements, um, uh, so there's um, one element has a tower of 19 metres, which is Sandy Bay side, and the other is stepped down, if you like, to 13 metres along Wilmot Street to be, um, as, as the architect, architect suggested in the briefing, to be more in keeping with the heritage heights, if not elements, heading up that street. Um, and the concerns raised uh, were, were predominantly around height um, and, again, the impact on heritage um, on St David's Park uh, and this is a heritage precinct, so it's a, a difficult um, area. The, this time the Urban Design uh, Advisory Panel were in favour uh, of the application and felt that the, the architect and applicant had um, had uh, come a long way to um, uh, softening, if you like, or improving uh, the original application. So as I said, Lord Mayor, um, it is recommended for approval subject to conditions. 
Okay, discussion, Alderman Barakas. Hey, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, Lord Mayor, I'm happy to um, uh, support the recommendations for approval on this. I think it's um, I think it's a terrific example of, of stuff that we, we, we can and should be approving. Um, I will also give credit to um, the excellent work that Alderman Sexton put in in drawing attention to the fact that of, of the large number of representations this item had, I think it was almost half or at least half of them seem to be in confusion about the actual details of the application. Um, so look, I'll, 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 so I'll just, I'll just uh, give uh, Alderman Sexton his credit where it's due. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, I think, you know, and, uh, well, sorry, and, and secondly, I think while it might not be a, um, a planning concern specifically, I think it is, I, I would like to note just how visually um, good looking and appealing the, the building is. And I think that's the sort of design that, and design excellence that we should be supporting and promoting in the city, because I think it is a, it is something that you know will be looked on in, in years to come as a, as, a, as a good example of architecture and a good example of, um, um, of, of housing development that we can be approving. So look, I'd, I'd like to see more stuff like this and um, I'll commend the applicant and I'll commend the motion to approve. Thank you, Councillor Sherlock. Yeah, thank you very much, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, I understand that during the deputation there was an issue raised that, was, that really didn't have anything to do with um, with the planning issue. So I will just solely, which is, it's really hard to just look at this um, at a planning level, but I did, uh, I will try and attempt to do that. Um, I do understand as we all do that uh, it came in 2016, a previous development on this site, um, but this is a new development and therefore we should assess it on its own merits in line with the DA submission. So I would just like to go through a few different things. Um, we all did receive that email today um, with regards to the height of it being at 19.35 and what Lee Woolley thought it, um, within that area between 18 metres and 30 metres for that area. And of course, we have not adopted Lee Woolley's um, report at all, but, but that is something to consider. Um, with regards to the building's overall height, it, it reduces somewhat given its design and also due to the fact that the site level rises to the southwest and moving up Wilmot Street. From the plan view, the building has a U-shaped form and from the tallest section, the building sets back in towards the middle of the site. Given the rising slope, the height reduces to approximately 14.6 metres at the southern, southeastern rear corner and the building and the roof line is a consistent 15 metres, but for approximately half of its length, setbacks are greatest due to the uh, irregularity in the title shape. There is a step between the taller part of the building and the terrace level, the height drops down from approximately 14.7 to 11.7 to then between 8.5 metres to 9.3 metres. Therefore, the building in terms of height takes advantage of the rise in elevation of the site being partially dug in and in terms of the design steps down in overall form uh, where adjacent buildings um, are of a a lesser scale. Um, I also do understand that um, in exercising our discretion, um, I do understand that we should probably consider the tribunal decision involving the Glamorgan Spring Bay Council and ORS, which determined that once a proposal is outside this acceptable solution building envelope, the building envelope no longer provides the test of reasonableness. Instead, it must be assessed on its own merits against the performance criteria. Now, as a result, this uh, proposal does um, have to comply with all four of the performance criteria. And I'll just go through them very br briefly. Firstly, it has to be consistent with any desired future character statements. And for this particular development uh, application, it is not relevant because there is no desired future character statements. Secondly, it ha has to be compatible with the scale of the nearby building. And compatibility means not necessarily the same, but at least similar to or in harmony with or broad correspondence with the surrounding area. And scale refers to, as per the tribunal decision uh, for the previous development, is an inference to height and it requires compa compatibility in that respect of nearby buildings. And for this proposal, the nearby buildings is the uh, Conservatorium of Music, the Masonic Hall, the Mantra and the four apartment buildings on the adjoining property. Therefore, this development is within both the Sandy Bay and the Wilmot Street uh, streetscape. And from the information provided in the report, this DA is considered compatible with the scale. Thirdly, the criteria is that it, uh, the third criteria is that it must not be unre it must not unreasonably overshadow adjacent public space. 
from the report, it is considered that the impact would be limited and the impact would be further limited to early mid-morning periods and may not be significantly greater than that caused by the existing building on the property at present. And therefore, it also satisfies criteria three. Uh, finally, um, criteria four, allow for a transition in- 30 height seconds, Councillor Sherlock. Buildings. Could I just get an extra minute, please? Uh, is anyone opposed to a minute? Oh, would someone like to move that, sorry. Uh, Councillor Ewan, seconded by uh, Councillor, uh, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor, if there's, is there anyone against the minute? Speak now. Nope. Okay. One minute's extension. Thank you very much, That's Lord Mayor. I'll be very, very quick. Um, and so within this criteria, which is the fourth criteria, as I mentioned, the uh, tribunal included that the height contributes positively to the streetscape from the difference in 0.8 metres between the cottage and the apex point of the de development to other issues pointed in the report, including the dimensional attributes of the adjoining cottage, as well as the glazing and articulation in cladding. It does add to the acceptability of the transition and therefore it also satisfies criteria four. Um, I do understand that as council may approve or refuse an application that compl complies with the standard relying on one or more performance criteria, uh, I do look forward to other uh, councillors and aldermen who um, may like to offer up their opinion with regards to this. Thank you very much, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Dutta. Uh, Lord, Lord Mayor, thank you very much. Just a few observations. I um, am... Uh, really concerned that there are a number of uh, people have raised concerns and so 209 regardless of the depth or detail or copying the same thing at least they did express um, their concerns for me it is valid the point here for me which is important firstly is the background uh, councillor sherlock mentions few things and i in this occasion will beg to differ. Uh, the, the, the background with regards to this particular application in 2006, it was not approved by council. It came to the council, uh, I'm sorry, it wasn't approved by the council staff. It came to council and the council voted uh, 10 for that recommendation of refusal and only two voted for. Now it then went into the appeal in the appeal, it is my understanding that during the mediation process, uh, there was a consent memorandum uh, was suggested to be entered by council. And again, I, it is my understanding that the neighbors refused and they continued. And therefore in the tribunal, the case was won by them, the appeal was lost and the original decision by the council was upheld. Therefore, the major point here is uh, height. Now, it is very clear that height must uh, be compatible with the scale of the nearby buildings. Now, it is my understanding that compatibility refers to at least similar, but not the same. So if it refers to similar, to me, that indicates a uh, ordinary definition to be at least or to the say, or to the to the uh, to the degree that is the same. So therefore, I am of the view that this does not really satisfy 154A and clause B uh, from my memory. So therefore, I will have difficulty supporting this. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Dutta. Is there further discussion? Any further discussion? Uh, I wouldn't mind just asking a quick question through um, the general manager to the director of planning, if that's okay. General manager? Some? Of course, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Um, just wondering about yeah, the the um, court case is obviously um, was a, was quite a. Um, I think the tribunal did put in some quite detailed um, 
advice that I think has reasonably far re reaching implications. I mean, why do you think um, this proposal um, tackles those issues that were raised and uh, raised very clearly in the tribunal's findings around, and I think it was transition, wasn't it? It was the big, the big, yeah. the big challenge. Yes, Lord Mayor, uh, transition was, um, I think, the failing of the previous application. Now, in, in, in this uh, application, uh, the transition, particularly to uh, 6 to 8 Wilmot Street, is much better aligned. Uh, it's a um, much closer, uh, similar height, or closer height to the adjacent uh, single storey heritage listed property. Um, the, there is greater articulation in the Wilmot Street um, treatment of the development. Um, there is it's much finer grain. Um, and the other point to make is that um, the, uh, the taller of the two uh, elements uh, fronting Sandy Bay Road is uh, two, two metres lower than the, the previous uh, proposal. So I think that those um, matters, uh, those three matters, uh, combined, coupled with the, the setback on, on Wilmot Street, the addition of landscaping, all provide much more refined uh, proposal that, um, in my mind, and, and certainly in the mind of the consultant planner who uh, argued against um, uh, the uh, previous proposal and um, her position was upheld by the tribunal. Now she's at, um, has supported this application, which seems to me indicate that uh, the uh, proponent uh, has uh, uh, fully considered those issues. Okay. All right. Um, any further discussion or Deputy Lord Mayor, would you like to sum up? Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. I think this has been a, a, a really uh, good discussion around uh, this item. I mean, I'm as to um, the to to whether to, to support this, uh, and um, uh, and it's partly because of of those those things that are inherent uh, inherent problems in some some respects uh, in relation to height and how, how the scale, how the transition does occur uh, in this area. And um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, General Manager or Mr Noy, but um, the other point was that that this is residential uh, versus something that was, was um, an application for a, for a hotel accommodation, was it not? Yeah, okay, so that was, that was in here, um, a, a very important part of the uh, the appeal and decision there. Um, so we have uh, an application um, that um, that did receive, did garner uh, a lot of um, interest by the public, and the public is interested in in our our building and development uh, operations and approvals. So um, to to disregard those, I think we do at our peril. Um, this is really important as part of a process. Not everybody is uh, as articulate as the next person in in relation to putting their application forward, and I know full well. Uh, that um, uh, whilst we do have two applications um, virtually side by side on Sandy Bay Road, this this is um, something which is of concern. So um, um, yeah, that's that's all I'll say in summing up, Lord Mayor. Okay, um, I'm going to put the motion and uh, again go around to everyone. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, I vote against, Lord Mayor. Alderman Zuko, for Lord Mayor. Alderman Briscoe. Uh, for Lord Mayor. Alderman Sexton. For Lord Mayor. Alderman Thomas. For. Alderm uh, Councillor Harvey. For. Alderman Barakas. For Lord Mayor. Councillor Dutta. Against. Uh, Councillor Ewan. For. Councillor Sherlock. In favour. Councillor Coates. In favour. Uh, and I'll vote in favour too. So, Lord Mayor, that is carried 10 votes to 2. Okay, um, we'll move on now to the 
654A Sandy Bay Road, item number 9.4, and invite Deputy Lord Mayor to uh, introduce this item. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, this is uh, an item that I did call in. So it's, it's 654A Sandy Bay Road, Sandy Bay, partial demolition, alterations and extension. Uh, the recommendation uh, for this application is for approval. I'll so move. Second, uh, does anyone like to, uh, Councillor Sherlock? Uh, Lord Mayor, just um, just in um, uh, just as a little bit more detail. Hang on, just to get to the right page. All right. Um, uh, so there were ten representations received, and the concerns were around the loss of views, visual impact, uh, inconsistency of the proposal with the pattern of development in the area overshadowing shadowing of adjacent properties, uh, site coverage, uh, loss of private, privacy and so forth. Um, most of the representations related to discretions that uh, have been discussed uh, in the report, but some issues raised were not actually related to discretions and those included views, you know, loss of views, which does come up occasionally, a heritage um, and um, the notification, um, and so, um, and this has come up in, in other applications that have come before us, uh, a number of representatives were concerned in relation to um, seeing uh, the, the, that this was advertised and uh, I can understand fully that, that that would be of concern if you're not walking past or you're not, not scanning um, for, for de development applications in your neighbourhood. Um, the proposal has been assessed against the relevant provisions of the planning scheme and is considered to be acceptable. There are a number of, um, of uh, conditions associated with this and, and the council's development engineer, environmental development planner, open space and recreation officer, uh, roads engineer and survey officer uh, believe that uh, the, the conditions uh, will allow um, appropriate uh, approval. So, um, uh, for this proposal. So moved, Lord Mayor. Uh, so that was seconded by Councillor Sherlock. Yes, uh, is there any discussion? Any hands up at all? No hands up. Okay, I'm going to put the motion and uh, go around to everyone. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor. In favour, Lord Mayor. Alderman Zuko. For oh, Lord Mayor. Alderman Briscoe. In favour, Lord Mayor. Alderman Sexton. For oh, Lord Mayor. Alderman Thomas. For. Oh. Councillor Harvey. For. Oh. Alderman Barakas. In favour, Lord Mayor. Councillor Dutter. In favour. Uh, Councillor Ewan. Oh. Councillor Sherlock. In favour. Councillor Coates. In favour. And I'll vote in favour too. So, Lord Mayor, that was unanimous. Twelve votes to nil. Okay, uh, moving on now to special reports from the general manager, item number ten. And uh, I think um, the general manager would like to open his report with a few comments. I'll invite him to do that. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Just briefly, um, just in introducing this item, Lord Mayor, um, I suppose the headline act is our financial position um, has not changed from our last two reports to the council. We are still predicting close to a $10 million deficit to the 30th of June. Uh, Lord Mayor, with a zero general rates increase and a freeze on fees and charges, we are predicting a deficit in 2021 of around about $12 million um, with anticipated borrowings, uh, Lord Mayor, up to $30 million, noting that the council uh, has already, Lord Mayor, approved in its long-term financial plan uh, to take up $15 million loan in 2021. Uh, as previously advised, Lord Mayor, we have made a number of cuts to our expenditure as our revenue continues to dry up. And we are asking council to note the changes to our 2019-20 uh, CAPEX program and to approve a revised 2021 CAPEX budget, which very much focuses on looking after the assets we have, Lord Mayor, 
uh, through renewal funding and upgrades rather than building new assets. And I think that's a prudent approach, Lord Mayor. Uh, Lord Mayor, just some good news. Uh, we are starting to slowly reopen some of our facilities, including our playgrounds and skate parks. Um, Customer Service Centre will open uh, this Wednesday, Lord Mayor, and we've opened our barbecues and sports grounds. We are urging people, Lord Mayor, uh, through this process to observe the social distancing signage and importantly, to be respectful of others, uh, other users of our facilities. Lord Mayor, I can't go without making a comment about the other main item on this agenda, which is the uh, 2021 Taste of Tasmania. Uh, due to the uncertain world that we are currently living in, Lord Mayor, and particularly given the social distancing requirements uh, are likely to be a fact of life for some time, at least until a vaccine for COVID-19 is found, we as officers have been unable to properly plan for this year's event. Lord Mayor, the Taste of Tasmania is a massive logistical exercise and by now, we would normally be two months into the planning for that event. Uh, any planning to this stage, Lord Mayor, has been largely impossible as we do not know what sort of event we'll be running. Lord Mayor, the officers have a long history of successfully delivering the taste uh, and in reality are the ones who really know how much is involved in planning and delivering this event. The recommendations uh, to not hold the taste of Tasmania as we know it, Lord Mayor, uh, was not taken easily. We certainly know the importance of this event to the Tasmanian community, tourism operators, storeholders, producers and sponsors, and even more so in these tough times. It's, it's a much loved event uh, and this Lord Mayor has made our deliberations and our recommendations even more difficult. We cannot recommend, however, Lord Mayor, that we push on with an event that costs our ratepayers a million dollars with no certainty as to what sort of event we'll be running. Lord Mayor, it's important to say that we are not saying there will be no event at New Year's time. What we are recommending is that the taste, uh, that, that there be no taste as we know uh, and love it, but depending on how things evolve, or, uh, evolve over the next few months, we could have a, less, a lesser event over a lesser period, still including fireworks. Finally, Lord Mayor, I know there is a proposed amendment for this item tonight, which the officers are aware of and support. And also, Lord Mayor, I have uh, distributed a letter that was written to you by the Premier seeking a deferral of the taste item tonight on the basis that we engage formally with the government and key stakeholders, such as the Tourism Industry Council of Tasmania, to consider options still to hold the event before the Council formally considers the event's future. Uh, so, look, Lord Mayor, with those opening remarks, I do commend my report to you with the amendment uh, that I know is going to be put later on. Okay, thank you, General Manager. And um, I should just um, um, very briefly um, read the letter from the Premier because I did undertake to him that I would uh, to the Council. Um, so as we discussed, the Taste of Tasmania is an important iconic event for Tasmania and importantly for the City of Hobart and support for its continuation for 2021, 2021 albeit with social distancing and other measures to make it COVID safe would provide an important confidence boost for the Tasmanian community and the tourism and hospitality sector. Accordingly, I propose that the Hobart City Council engage formally with the government and key stakeholders such as the TICT, um, the, Tasmanian, uh, the Tourist Industry Council of Tasmania, to consider options to still hold the event before the council formally considers the event's future. In this context, I would request that the motion currently planned to be considered at tomorrow's council meeting be deferred and that we meet in the, during the coming week to discuss options for the event to proceed prior uh, to your council formally considering the future of the event. I understand that there are currently challenges with COVID-19 and social distancing, but many events have already found innovative ways to adjust and the taste is still more than six months away um, as it is, uh, it provides time for innovative solutions to be explored that would provide a model to successfully showcase the very best of Tasmania. As you're aware, the Tasmanian government provided an additional 500,000 in the 1920 budget uh, to which the Hobart City Council, to the Hobart City Council to support the event, uh, which includes 250,000 provision for the upcoming 2021 festival. That funding remains available. I look forward to your 
favourable consideration of my request, yours sincerely, Peter Gutwin, MP Premier. So um, that's um, that's a, a request that he made um, during a conversation on Sunday with myself. So um, that's before the council. I open the item. I think I've got Peter um, Alderman Sexton as the the first uh, speaker. Alderman Sexton. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, yes, I'm proposing to move the amendment that I have circulated, and I think most um, elected members and relevant staff have had an opportunity to, to see it. I'll read it out. Um, that, that the cat was, so this would replace. Sorry, I'm just going to. I'm just going to check that the seconder was. Is that Deputy Lord Mayor? Did I see your hand? Or oh, and oh, no, Lord Alderman Thomas. Thank it you. was. Sorry. Okay. It, it's a. It's a replacement for um, uh, clause nine. Uh, clause eleven. So we'll say um, we'll replace clause 11 with the words the council not council not proceed with the taste of Tasmania in its current format for the 2021 year. Further, the council delegates to the general manager the development and delivery of an alternative New Year's Eve and a modified taste style event over the Christmas New Year period should COVID-19 restrictions make such an, an event practical. To that end, an allocation of $300,000 be included in the 2021 draft estimates. The council requests the general manager hold urgent discussions with state government representatives regarding additional funding of such an event. And Lord Mayor, I'm happy to add a, an additional um, sentence that, um, that the general manager also hold discussions with any other relevant organisations with an interest in the taste. So that would be a replacement clause. Um, so I, 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 is, the seconder, is the seconder happy with that replacement? Yeah. Yes, or Thomas, yep. And uh, so just, just to speak briefly to that, um, I understand what the Premier has said uh, in requesting a deferral, but I don't think a deferral would uh, be in anybody's interest. And the reason for that is, if we defer it tonight, we have not made a decision to do anything. We have made a decision to not do anything and, um, for a period of time. And that just adds to the uh, delay in preparing for whatever it is that we ultimately do, puts more pressure on the, on the uh, officers, and it makes any sub substantial or interesting event less likely. Uh, by doing this tonight, what we are doing is confirming that we are going to have a taste of Tasmania in one form or another, that we will probably have a New Year's Eve um, a celebration with fireworks, but that we will limit the uh, ratepayers, the cost to ratepayers to $300,000 in acknowledgement that the Premier has already offered $250,000, which means it's a $550,000 event, which is still a substantial amount of money and it may be possible to raise money from other organisations given that we've had a number of people who have been offering um, advice as to uh, involving the private sector. So Lord Mayor, uh, I don't think uh, I need to say any more than that. I think it's fairly self-evident that we need to provide some certainty. We need to negotiate as we've been asked to do, but we need to protect the um, financial interests of the council, but also give our officers enough time to get on with the job that they need to do if we're going to have, have anything decent um, in the in the uh, Christmas New Year period. Lord Mayor, I did have my hand up. I don't know whether you noticed it. I did have my hand up, Lord Mayor, did you notice it? Uh, yes, I did, but yours was not the first one, I think. Um, so you, I'll, come, I'll come to you in just a sec, um, Alderman Briscoe. Um, look, I just need to clarify that um, uh, the mover, um, Alderman Sexton, you're moving the entire motion with an amendment. I'm moving the entire motion. No, no, oh, sorry, oh, sorry, yes, I, I am. I'm moving okay. the entire motion. I agree with everything else. It's with, only clause 11 that okay. I wish to And Alderman Thomas, is that your understanding? Yes, what you're yes. doing, yep. Okay, so we've uh, we've got a, 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 an amended motion, and I have Alderman Barakas. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'll um, I'll definitely be voting for the amended um, motion. I think everything in there is pretty um, pretty good, and I thank the general manager for um, for the work that he's put in. Um, and give, with in regards to item eleven, I think the um, the amendment put by Alderman Sexton will go a long way to, I think, reduce some of the confusion that's been out in the community. When I first heard this, I also thought that the, the taste was actually kaput. Um, and obviously, um, after reading the report a couple more times, it became evident that that, that wasn't quite the case. Um, I think the wording that's been suggested will um, will clarify that, you know, it's it's not being cancelled. Um, we, we just, obviously, for um, multiple reasons, including the, the 
social distancing restrictions and the fact that we won't know what the next six months holds, as well as our budgetary position, I think it is appropriate that we um, that we, we are going to be forced to have a, a, a less a less um, uh, um, extravagant and smaller scale smaller scale event. But um, look. Um, I, th I think this year, as much as more than any year, I think we've had um, probably the most difficult year that our city's had in a generation, and probably possibly the most difficult year we've had in in this, the history of this city. I think the pe I think the people of Hobart and the people of Tasmania that, that enjoy the taste um, every year want and deserve a way to, to to cap the year off, to finish, to end it right, and to provide some closure on what's been such a, such a difficult year. So if we can. Um, ease some of the concerns and sort of do do our best to provide something as as, as best we can. I think I think we definitely should. Um, in regards to the request by the premier, I think um, as Alderman Sexton said, the the, the proposed motion um, would address the concerns raised by the premier. I think the premier's request for a deferral was under the intention under the um, understanding that we were going to be canning the taste rather than doing a smaller version of the taste. So I think if with the, with this new wording of the motion and the, the um, including the seeking to hold an urgent meeting with the premier, I, I do think it's a, um, I don't think it's appropriate. I don't think there's a need necessarily to defer because I don't think that necessarily even um, contradicts what the premier's asked for. So um, we do need to obviously work with the state government on this. They're our biggest sponsor for the taste after our, after ourselves. And they're also the ones that will be deciding the rules as far as what we can do and how we can do it. But um, look, as for the, um, the the confusion of this, I, I would hope that this is something that we can all be constructive on. And for the most part, we have. There was some pretty disappointing political statements made over the weekend linking this to other funding, which I thought was com completely inappropriate. But, you know, I, I, w I would have thought that, you know, we're all on the same page here. We want to try and put an event here that we can all um, be proud of with the with the resources and the restrictions that we have. But, but look, otherwise, I once again commend the work that the general manager and the staffs put in and um, hope that we can work forth from here. Uh, now I have uh, Councillor Dutta. Uh, Lord Mayor, just two points I want to make. One is that it is my understanding that it is not, um, the amendment is not saying we are allocating exactly 300,000, but simply allocating in the budget uh, but not for the taste, as it were. I just want that clarification. General Manager, would you like to respond to that? Well, uh, Lord Mayor, in fairness, I think uh, Alderman Sexton might want to respond to it as the uh, architect of the amendment. Okay, Alderman Sexton. Could you clarify the question for Councillor Dutta? Sorry, I, I missed that. If you could repeat that, Councillor Dutta. Yes, the, the question is that it is an allocation of 300 to the budget but not necessarily uh, earmarked 300,000 for the test. Uh, okay, so um, I did have this conversation with, with um, uh, Councillor Dutta earlier today. So the, in, in drafting a budget, there has to be an amount of money that's put into the budget. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be spent. All, all budget items, as we know, are estimates, uh, and we keep our fingers crossed that we won't exceed it. Uh, I think the, the general managers uh, we'll be delighted if we spend less than $300,000, but there's no point in putting in an amount that's lower into a budget and then having to come back and and, uh, and request an additional amount. So in, in response to um, to Councillor Dutta, I'm sure that the general manager will, will reassure you that he will be spending no more than he has to and absolutely no more than $300,000. Uh, and, and Lord Mayor, I'm quite happy to give the council that undertaking. So... Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And my second second point is that I want to foreshadow an amendment as well. Uh, I don't think you need to foreshadow an amendment because we don't have an amendment in front of us. So um, if you'd just like to put your amendment, Councillor Dutta. Yeah, uh, the, the amendment is that we, uh, that cla clause six be removed and that the following words be added to the last clause, that is clause 14, and it should read, the addition is, apart from the city planning and risk and audit panel committee meetings in number 14. So delete Councillor Dutta, could you like to just read that once again for us, yes. please? Uh, delete six and add 
this to number 14. Apart from the city planning and risk and audit panel committee meetings. Okay, did you want to speak to your amendment, Councillor Dada? Oh, actually, I need a seconder for it. Is there a seconder for it? Alderman Briscoe is, a, are you, is your hand up as a seconder for it, Alderman Briscoe, or to speak? To speak, I think. Okay, the seconder, I can't hear you, Alderman Briscoe, but I, I think you had your hand up to speak. And so I'm asking, I think it's um, Councillor Ewan has put her hand up to second it. Um, so, Councillor Dada, did you want to explain your amendment? Yeah, the, the, uh, the point to uh, note for me is that what happened tonight, uh, there was a deputation, and I think the uh, number of applications that's coming through, uh, we don't have the opportunity to really go through that process, and we may not be doing uh, you know, a favour to those people who uh, are missing out on this. Therefore, my suggestion is that we, in fact, should uh, consider the planning and the risk committee meetings. Thank you. Okay, um, would anyone like to speak to the amendment? Uh, Alderman Briscoe, your hands up. Yes, yes, I'd like to speak to the amendment. Am I, I'm only speaking uh, to the amendment, correct? Sorry, I don't have your hand up yet, Alderman Zuko. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, no, I'd Alderman like to speak Briscoe? to the amendment. Yes. yes, Alderman Briscoe, I thought so. Uh, thank you. No, no, Alderman Briscoe, uh, if you could speak. A, I have other comments which I'd like to bring up as well. Now, I think uh, I think what Alderman Dutter is saying is that the meetings, the planning and the audit uh, uh, um, resume and we don't delegate everything to council. So can I just get clarification that that's what uh, Councillor Dutter is referring to? Councillor uh, yes, Dutter? I, yes, I am. Yes. Uh, I, and it can be either through Zoom or physical distancing. Yeah. I, I think we're now quite practised uh, in using Zoom. And I think uh, uh, if Autumn and uh, Councillor Dutta uh, puts in uh, that we, we could, uh, I, I, the Parks meeting does need uh, meetings as well in Zoom. And I think we could start resuming meetings, including uh, planning, because I think uh, my comments earlier referred to uh, the strange meeting we had prior to Council, and I won't repeat that. But I, I believe that there is a, uh, there's some important issues coming up in, in Parks as well that needs to be uh, discussed in a committee and a committee via Zoom seems to work. And uh, I think if uh, Councillor Dutta indicates uh, that uh, Parks and Recreation Committee in, in his amendment, otherwise I'll have to move in a, a foreshadow another amendment. But I don't like to do that because I've got another foreshadow amendment that I will uh, talk about in a moment. So you know, I wonder if we could get uh, confirmation from uh, Councillor Dutta to include Parks and Recreation. Councillor Dutta, would you like to include that? Yeah, I am reluctant, but for sake of working together collaboratively, I will. Okay, and um, is the seconder, Councillor Ewan, happy with that? Yes, that's fine, although I'm not too sure why specifically that committee and not every other one as well. Okay. Um, is, well, I, I, is that all? Let, let me know when I can speak, Lord Mayor. Uh, yes, can I just can continue? I, I'd like all committees to, uh, to meet, but uh, as uh, Councillor Dutta mentioned, two committees, and I think uh, it, it, it's uh, because I'm the Chairman of Parks and I know there's a couple of important issues coming up before Parks. I, don't, I think it needs a discussion. I'm sure um, uh, Councillor Ewan uh, might, uh, I would support if she moves to all committees to meet via Zoom. Um, so uh, I uh, foreshadow another amendment uh, that um, that uh, should uh, and be, could be part of part 11, uh, uh, Alderman Sexton's uh, addition to the main motion. And, uh, and uh, it is the, the Premier, and as background, the Premier has invited to speak to the Lord Mayor in the next few days. Um, and so my, my part uh, foreshadowed amendment to 11 would be uh, his 11, uh, Alderman Sexton's 11 BA, and there'd be a B. Uh, should the Lord Mayor meet with the Premier, the Chairman of Finance form part of that meeting? Okay, um, so we've got that as a foreshadowed motion. Is there anyone else? Uh, amendment, Lord Mayor. 
Uh, sorry, flush out an amendment. Thank you, Alderman Briscoe. So I might just go back to the speaking um, list and we've got um, uh, Alderman Zuko is next, I think. Alderman Zuko. Yes, Lord Mayor, I'd like to speak to the motion uh, put forward by uh, Councillor Dutta and second by uh, Councillor Yun. That's an amendment. And, yes, oh, the amendment, sorry. Yep. Um, and I actually agree with uh, Councillor Yuan in respect of, I, I find it, um, if we're gonna, going to go down the track of um, having planning or parks or whatever have you, we either go uh, and, and have all committee meetings or provide the delegated authority to the general manager, if, if need be, he can call committee meetings. Now, we have to decide tonight whether or not we want to go back to committee meetings. Personally, after spending nearly an hour and a half at a briefing tonight, which I thought was an absolute waste of my hour and a half, I'd like to go back to committee meetings. Um, and and um, instead of um, 14 reading that the council committee meetings remain suspended, I'd like to see that wording that the council re uh, committee meetings be reinstated. Hopefully uh, the two movers of the motion, uh, uh, Councillor Dutta and the second uh, uh, Councillor Ewan uh, would, would give consideration to that because okay. I think that resol that resolves everyone's issues or everyone's problems in regards to that. And at the end of the day, if there's only one or two items, um, they could be deferred to prior to a council meeting um, and and uh, deal with them in, 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 in that manner. And, uh, you know, I, I, I would hope that uh, both um, uh, Councillor Dutta and Councillor Ewan would give consideration to it. Okay. Councillor Dutta, can you confirm whether you want to accept that into your amendment? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to accept, accept that. Okay, and Councillor Ewan, are you happy to accept that? Yes, that's fine. Um, I do just have a point of clarification, though. It was my understanding that foreshadowed motions can only be on planning items. Um, so I'm just a little bit confused about Alderman Briscoe's foreshadowed motion. Whether no, I think it's basic happens. meeting procedure. Oh, General uh, Manager, did you want to comment? There can be foreshadowed motions on any matter before the council, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Um, so we've got the, um, that's been accepted in. Um, are there any other, is anyone else with their hand up wanting to speak to the amendment in front of us? Um, Ald uh, Alderman Thomas, your hand is up. Are you wanting to speak to the amendment on the committees? You'll have to unmute yourself. Yeah, no, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Was that, me? was that me? Sorry, my no. audio just cut out for a second. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's all right. Um, does any, uh, if you wouldn't, uh, so we've got, we've got the, we've got the, um, Councillor Harvey, did you want to speak to the amendment? Yes, just a comment that I, I support the amendment. I'd be happy for <clears throat> committees to resume meeting via Zoom. But I'd also like to get uh, advice from the, the general manager, whether we're in a, a time of less activity or more activity and whether it's practical to schedule meetings again when there may not be much on the agenda. So I'll ask that as a question to the general manager. Do we have much coming on the agenda for the committees to start again? Because there's no point scheduling meetings if there's not much going on. General manager. Uh, Lord Mayor, look, I really haven't uh, spent much time looking at the Ford agenda, but having said that, uh, planning is always uh, relatively busy um, in a sense. Uh, I do know as well, Lord Mayor, that we are going into budget season, so the preparation of the estimates would normally be something we ran through the uh, Finance and Governance Committee after it had been to the Risk and Audit Panel. So I think that's good governance to do that. Uh, look, in, in the context of the other committees, uh, Lord Mayor, I really haven't spoken to the directors about our forward work plan because it has been dominated by one issue, which is obviously the COVID issue. But Lord Mayor, there's always, there's always um, stuff to refer to committees, but I just don't have a list before me at the moment, but I uh, hope that addresses your question. Okay, yeah, look, thanks General Manager. So I'm happy to support that we do have committees again, if required. So it might be that we don't need to meet, but if we do need to meet, then I'm happy to meet by Zoom. Okay, thank uh, you. All the I'm associated with. 
Thanks. Um, so, Alderman Brackus, were you wanting to speak to the amendment? Ah, uh, yes, Lord Mayor. Um, look, th thank you, Lord Mayor. I think the um, I think the the um, suggestion or the amendment put forward by um, uh, Councillor Dutter and and then the, that has been sort of just evolved um, is is I think it's a, it's a good idea. It's sort of something I've been thinking about for a little while. I think um, you know, especially especially planning and finance and governance. I think are two where the two um, committees in particular, given what's what's happening, where we do still need to be able to sit down and um, discuss these issues in depth and have those in-depth discussions that we can't really have in the format of five minute speeches. And especially with um, with, with planning items, I think, um, you know, whilst, um, you know, say, for instance, um, the past committee might not have anything immediately on the agenda. I think if the, these committees pop up as required, if there's nothing that's needed on any given week, then we don't just don't need to have a committee meeting. But I think we've, we've got the budget coming up. We've got um, all these things happening because of the, the COVID issue as the general manager um, uh, uh, elaborated on. Um, I think it is, I think it's important. I think it's incumbent on us to be able to have these in-depth conversations that we can have that back and forward um, so we can really get into the nitty gritty of the, um, of the issue. I think for, for starters, I think if the, um, um, the the issue of the taste of Tasmania, the recommendation 11 went through a committee, we would have had a bit more of an in-depth conversation about that. And there may have been a less chance of there being some community confusion because we would have been able to nut through, nut out those issues ourselves. Um, also, I think, you know, the, the planning one in particular is an important one. I think we've had many, many, um, you know, uh, contentious or many um, large scale developments that have come through that there's been, you know, applicants that have wanted their say on issues and there's been, um, concerned members of the community that have wanted their say on issues. And it's, it, just, it seems up until now, the only people that have been able to be afforded the opportunity to speak are those that have had favours pulled for them. So I think, um, you know, this is a good step forward. I think it makes for better governance. And if we don't need the committees, we don't need to have them. But but I think we should be, um, you know, especially now that we do have the capabilities, we've proven it, we've proven the model, uh, we should be able to, you know, try and get as much normality in our council process as, as possible. Uh, oh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you want to speak to the amendment or the sub? Yep. Uh, yeah, I'll speak to the amendment first, Lord Mayor. Look, um, I appreciate uh, Councillor Dutta uh, putting this forward for uh, the risk and audit panel, was, which obviously needs to meet. It's a really important time that we have our risk and audit panel um, uh, meeting and considering uh, all of these things that are occurring um, <laughs> at a, a time of... of uh, major disruption and major financial strain uh, for our council. And whilst I'm, I'm aware that the, the general manager and, and the risk and audit panel was going ahead, it was uh, silent when talking about committees. Um, my other, um, and I think uh, Alderman Barakas has eloquently made the point that um, hearing uh, these planning matters is really important. And um, what I don't, want to see is is a significant demand on officers and directors that we that we are imprudent with with what sort of things we're considering at committee um, I would think that we would be streamlining that as much as possible for the other non-planning committee um, items or uh, non-planning committees um, but as uh, has uh, the point has been made, that that uh, finance and government will be uh, uh, considering major part to to the substantive motion. Okay, thank you. All right, so we've um, I think we've had all the um, comments on the uh, on the uh, amendment by Councillor Dutta, seconded by Councillor Ewan. Uh, so I'm going to put that amendment now. Um, Just a clarification, uh, uh, Mayor. Um, yes. Uh, so uh, uh, Councillor Dutta's amendment does affect 14, doesn't it? Uh, part 14. Yes, it does. Lord, would would Lord, you like it read out again? Yeah, I was going to say, Lord Mayor, maybe it should be read. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. So the... The motion is to remove clause 6 and add the following word to, to clause 14. Um, the council note that the next scheduled council meeting will be 22nd June 20 and that council committee meetings uh, resume 
remotely as required. Thank you. Okay, is everyone clear on the amendment? Okay, I will go round and uh, see if you're supportive of the amendment, uh, in favour of the amendment, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, well, just a query, Lord Mayor, does it have to be remotely? Um, I, I don't think we need to make a decision now, but I'm not sure that it needs to be remotely. I'm I, think that's what the I think that's what the amendment is, so... Um, unless... No, Lord Mayor, that's not the way I read it. It says the council note that the next scheduled council meeting will be blah, blah, and the council meetings resume. Okay, so no, it doesn't sound as it is remotely. Okay, um, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, Alderman Zuko. In favour, Lord Mayor. For Lord Mayor. All, Alderman Briscoe. Uh, in favour, Lord Mayor. Alderman Sexton. For Lord Mayor. Alderman Thomas. For. Councillor Harvey. For. Alderman Barakas. For Lord Mayor. Councillor Dutta. For. Councillor Ewan. For. Councillor Sherlock. In favour. Councillor Coates. In favour. And I'm in favour. So that's carried unanimously, Lord Mayor. Okay, so we'll move on now to the foreshadowed motion from Alderman Briscoe. Uh, and was that seconded by, I can't remember who that was seconded by. Well, it hadn't been seconded. Well, ah, it hasn't yeah, been seconded. Okay, sorry, it. Alderman Briscoe, would you like to put your motion? Uh, yeah, it's not a motion, it is an amendment. Uh, amendment, sorry, I'm sorry, yeah. Amendment. Uh, so, so just to read out again, so uh, um, part 11 be changed, so the, the, the uh, part 11 that exists would be A, and there'd be a new part B. Uh, should the Lord Mayor meet with the Premier, uh, the Chairman of Finance be part of, form part of that meeting? Okay, and I think that was seconded. I heard that was seconded by Councillor Coates. Um, all right, is there any discussion on that one? I've got some hands up. Councillor Ewan, did you want to speak to that? No. Uh, does anyone want to speak to it? Councillor Dutta does. Councillor Dutta? Um, Lord Mayor, thank you. I um, am just going to, uh, in the same uh, spirit, suggest to Alderman Briscoe, if you would not mind accepting a change by saying the chairs of all the committees. Uh, uh, can I answer that, uh, Lord Mayor? Uh, yes, yes, that? of course. Uh, uh, I don't think it's quite the same as uh, uh, your generous offer to include my uh, chairman, uh, of parks or the parks committee, because it's pretty important that it's the money. Uh, the money uh, is a, a key issue here, and I think if we keep uh, a meeting with the premier pretty small, uh, focused, if we have all the chairs of the committee, it would be like a delegation. I don't think anything would be achieved. So, I'd love to say to um, my colleague and dear friend, uh, Councillor Dutta, that I'd like to accept that, but I'm sorry, I won't. Okay. Um, Councillor, did you want to say anything else about the foreshadow motion or was it just the question? It was just a question. Oh, the amendment, sorry. Sorry, I'm getting a bit... It, it was just okay. a question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dutta. Uh, I have hands up from Councillor Harvey. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I won't be supporting this foreshadowed motion. Um, I think that the it should be the Lord Mayor, the General Manager, and the Director of Community Life. I think those three will have it covered. I don't think we need a fourth. And if there was going to be a fourth, maybe it should be the Chair of the Committee that, um, that uh, is responsible for the taste. But that said, I, I won't be moving that as an amendment to the foreshadowed. I just think that it should be only the three, the Lord Mayor, the General Manager, and the director of our community life. So I won't be supporting this. I have a hand up from Councillor Sherlock. Yeah, thank you very much, Lord Mayor. Look, I completely agree with um, Councillor Harvey. Um, as the chair of the uh, community culture and events of which, you know, the taste is a part of, of that committee to my understanding. Um, I would love to be there, of course, but I, I wholeheartedly have faith in the uh, general manager, the director of the community life division, and, and of course you, Lord Mayor, as well. And I won't be supporting this foreshadowed motion either. Thank you. Okay, uh, any further 
Uh, any further interventions on this one? Uh, I think of no, Councillor Coates. Are you wanting to speak? Uh, yes. Look, I, I um I also have huge faith in the uh, obviously the Lord Mayor and the um, general manager. Look, the reason really I um, uh, supported this motion, I, I do think though that, I mean, no one wanted to uh, abolish, if you like, the taste or, or have to withhold funding from it, but it is a, um, uh, a recommendation put forward on funding grounds. Ultimately, ratepayers in the situation we're in, um, I mean, as we saw from the previous items discussion, we just don't have that capacity. And I, I do feel that um, the representation from the Finance and Governance Committee really does ultimately it may be a bad news story to have to deliver to the premier but we're just not in a position to be able to do that and that's the um if you like the provenance of where um this negotiation is coming from um and so that was the reason why i thought it was it was eminently appropriate but um the lord mayor and the general manager if you like are backed up by the chairman of um of finance uh and that was my reasoning in in, in being wholeheartedly supportive of it and really i see it as a way of supporting the general manager and the lord mayor Okay, uh, there's no more hands up, so I'll put the foreshadowed, oh, sorry, I'll put the amendment before us uh, from Alderman Briscoe, seconded by Councillor Coates. Uh, I'll just go around and ask your vote. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor? Against. Alderman Zuko? For Lord Mayor. Alderman Briscoe? <laughs> For, um. I guess. I can't hear you, Alderman Briscoe, but... Oh, sorry. Yep. Four. 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 Alderman Thomas. Four. Councillor Harvey. Against. Uh, Alderman Barakas. All on, man. Oh, I didn't get Alderman Sexton, I don't think. No, you didn't. Uh, Alderman Mayor. Sexton, sorry. Four. Uh, where am I up to? Alderman, did I get Alderman Barakas? Barakas. Alderman Barakas. All on, Mayor. Uh, Councillor Dutter? Uh, against. Councillor Ewan? Against. Councillor Sherlock? Against. Councillor Coates? Uh, for Lord Mayor. Uh, and I'll vote against. So, so, Lord Mayor, that's a 6 6 vote, so the amendment is lost. Okay, so we're moving back to the um, substantive or the motion as amended. Um, so are there any other discussions about this um, quite substantial recommendation from the general manager? Covers quite a lot of um, issues, finance and um, uh, uh, other, other items. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, this this is um, obviously a substantial um, motion. There are a, a number of components to it, um, and already we've had um, a significant amount of discussion. Um, the the um, I, I again commend the the work of the general manager and uh, directors, as well as uh, the rest of the council team, for the work that they're doing uh, in trying to steer our our ship, our community's ship, um, as as nimbly through through these troubled waters as possible. Um, we we have significant um, uh, deficit, uh, and I was reminded of the the risk and audit panel's advice to us um, over the last couple of. of um, um, uh, for for our budget papers of budget papers tonight but um, the consistency and audit panel to to council is to be prudent in relation to our our um, any sort of sort of surplus um, and any sort of deficit spending um, and I think that we um, and part of that that uh, thinking from the risk and audit panel was uh, around any future uh, disasters that that might uh, befall before the council and the city, uh, we celebrated the the May um, twenty eighteen uh, anniversary the other day. Well, not really celebrated, but uh, remembered the the floods that occurred 
in 2018 and, and uh, the impact that it had on various parts of our city. Now, this is um, um, an un unlikely thing to be um, a, a single singular event. Um, and we know that the climate is changing. We know that there, there will be um, potentially further disasters that may, may uh, we must be doing uh, and I look forward to uh, going to provide to us. Um, the, Lord Mayor, the, I must reflect on, on um, the, the number of, of capital works and the amazing work that the, the Council has done. Uh, there, there are uh, on our report uh, a, a long list of, of um, works completed. Uh, we still have deferred works and works to be done. Um, and obviously those are in, in part of the, the considerations tonight as to how uh, we might go about that. And I'm, I'm guided by the officers. I just have a, a, a question through you to the general manager and it goes um, to the uh, borrowings that we've had. Now we have a, a table of, of current borrowings and not reflected in that, but, but mentioned in the report was um, the $20 million of borrowings um, that occurred after the 31st of March. Um, so through you to the, the general manager, um, could you give an indication as to how much of that, that bo those borrowings were in relation to um, wages and keeping you know, that, that operating uh, budget um, uh, above the line? Um, Lord, Lord Mayor, the, the council, through you, Lord Mayor, the, the council approved um, the estimates for this year, uh, the 1920 year on the basis that we would do uh, certain capital works, so certain capex. Um, we we got further through the year than we thought um, with our with that ha without having to take that borrowing up. So we we, we have um, borrowed uh, because we have delivered um, a number of projects on our capex budget. Um, so we we borrowed to to fund the capital works that we've done, Lord Mayor. Um, to, to answer that specific question, though, Lord Mayor, it is absolutely no doubt that as the year went further on um, and we had the COVID-19 issues, um, we did um, have a cash flow issue and I did report that to the council, Lord Mayor, at the council meeting in March and it was necessary to draw down uh, the loan um, sooner than we would have liked, um, obviously, but it is, um, the loan has been drawn down to fund the CapEx work that we had done to that point and there's no doubt at all that the drawing down the loan helped us with our cash flow positions through to the 30th of June. So I hope that answers the question, Lord Mayor. It's not possible just to sit here and say X percent of that loan that we drew down was used for operating. Uh, what it is possible to say is that we did have pre-allocated approval from the council to draw down $20 million and we did have a pre-approved CapEx budget, which we are largely worked our way through, except for the adjustments that we've made in the context of this report. Thank you. Thanks, General Manager. I think um, those when we're thinking about um, budget for. Sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor, but you're um, breaking up quite a lot. So we might come, I think you might have even dropped out. Um, so we'll, we'll come. We might come back to you if you, I'll see if you've, you've, um, you're at time, but I'll check with that when you dial back in. Um, oh, there you are. Um, was Deputy Lord Mayor at time? She had. She had, Lord Mayor, 15 seconds left uh, before I was going to make the 30 second call before she asked me the question. Okay. So she has 15 seconds, Lord Mayor. <laughs> Anything okay, to Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll just finish finish up. I think um, we do have um, we ha have major considerations uh, coming up, and uh, prudency and um, financial considerations, and the, the health of our community um, are, are foremost in my mind. 
Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, Council, uh, sorry, um, Alderman Barakas. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just a, just a question through you to the General Manager. Um, in regards to recommendation 11 and funding, um, does the funding included in the federal government's local roads and community infrastructure program have any impact or relevance to the funding of the Taste of Tasmania? Um, I, I believe not, Lord Mayor. And I say I believe not, Lord Mayor, because um, we are yet to really get any detail around the funding that was announced by the Deputy Prime Minister last week. Um, but I, I don't believe it would relate to the taste. Um, however, uh, once we've got the formal advice and the deed from the Deputy Prime Minister, we can advise the Council further on that. Uh, but it is a little bit early um, for you, Lord Mayor, to advise Alderman Barakas on the answer to that question. I need yep. to take, might need to take that one on notice because there's quite a bit of detail about it. Um, okay, there's no other questions, no other... Um, uh, Anyone else? Did you want to sum up at all on your report, General Manager? Uh, no, no, thank you, Lord Mayor. I just um, do value the input from the elected members in this difficult time, and, and thank you and the Deputy Lord Mayor and the and the Alderman and the elected members for their input. So, um, no, thank you, Lord Mayor. We've we've got a clear direction tonight. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to put the uh, recommendation as amended or the motion as amended. Um, and go round and invite you to say whether you're in favour of it. So, Deputy Lord Mayor. In favour, Lord Mayor. Alderman Zuko. In favour, Lord Mayor. Alderman Briscoe. I can't hear you, all. Oh. Oh, uh, in favour, Lord Mayor. Uh, Alderman Sexton. For, Lord Mayor. Alderman Thomas. In favour, Lord Mayor. Councillor Harvey. For. Alderman Barakas. In favour, Lord Mayor. Councillor Dutta. For. Councillor Sh uh, Ewan. For. Councillor Sherlock. In favour. Councillor Coates. In favour. And I'm in favour. Thank you. So, Lord Mayor, that's uh, unanimous. And, and again, thank you to the Council for that um, guidance. Uh, and we do actually, just I wanted to note, we do have a budget workshop, I think, later this week. So there'll be uh, an opportunity to go into quite a bit more detail with each other uh, and discuss that. Uh, so, item 11, uh, yeah. would someone like to move that? Moved by Councillor Sherlock, seconded by Councillor Ewan. Um, I might just do that one by, is there anyone opposed to receiving and noting all those questions? No. Okay, so that's carried unanimously. Uh, now I need a motion to move into the closed portion. No, there's, there's oh. A oh, okay, sorry. Supplementary is item 13. I need a mover to receive and note that as well. Councillor Ewan, seconded by Councillor Dutter. Okay, anyone want to speak on that? Uh, we've got the supplementary item first, haven't we, Lord Mayor? We're, do we're doing that now. Oh, that's oh, item 13. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Anyone want to speak on that one? Okay, uh, is there anyone who, I'm going to do that one by opposed. Anyone opposed to receiving and noting item 13? Okay, there's no one opposed. So that's um, a unanimous vote as well. And now I need a motion to move into the closed. Uh, Alderman Barakas, second. I'm happy, to, I'm happy to move that we close the open and open the closed, Lord Mayor. Thank you. And seconded by Councillor Dutter. So we will now um, say goodbye to the members of the community. Thanks for your interest and watching. And we'll move into our closed agenda now. <laughs>